As the Taliban government of Afghanistan celebrates two years of its leadership, the United Nations says the International Criminal Court should recognize gender discrimination in Afghanistan as a crime against humanity. Mr. John Brown, who is the United Nations Special Envoy for Global Education and former UK Prime Minister, said the legal opinion the UN has received shows that the denial of education to Afghan girls and employment to Afghan women is gender discrimination, which should count as a crime against humanity and should be prosecuted by the International Criminal Court. He says 54 of 80 edicts issued by the Taliban explicitly target women and girls and deprive them of their rights. The Taliban recently issued additional bans on women and girls' participation in university exams and on visits to public places, including cemeteries and other activities. For joining me now from the United States uh, to discuss the Taliban leadership is a member of the board of the Afghan American Chamber of Commerce, Doug Brooks. Thank you for joining us on The World Now. It's been two years since the Taliban took power in Afghanistan. Would you say they've fulfilled the promises they made when they came on board? Well, they haven't really had a whole lot of capability since they came to power. There has been, obviously, many changes because of their their uh, return to power. Um, but they have not been, they've not had all the capabilities they need to really run the country properly. And, of course, a lot of Afghans who had been trained and who were very talented from the past 20 years, uh, the previous 20 years, I should say, uh, of uh, international involvement, uh, many of them have fled. Um, because the Taliban really uh, have a very strict form of uh, Islam that they are trying to impose on the country. Uh, and as you discussed, this has especially been seen uh, in terms of the, the gender issues they have and the, their reluctance to allow women to uh, become educated. And specifically, it does appear the Taliban are targeting women because a number of the policies in place are against their growth and development. How, how do you see all of this happening? Uh, it's been a huge issue, and, and the Taliban have been receiving a lot of pressure internationally as a result of this policy, uh, including from um, most of the Islamic world, which uh, obviously has a very different perspective on uh, interpretation of, of how women, uh, what role women should have in society. Uh, Afghanistan, again, in the previous 20 years before the Taliban came back to power, uh, women had a huge role inside Afghanistan, holding a lot of positions, getting a higher level education and so on. Uh, and the Taliban have basically uh, they've, they've cut their own foot off because they're they've, they're not allowing these women to participate in society. They're not allowing them to hold uh, response, jobs of responsibility, uh, and they're preventing the next generation of women from from becoming contributors to the to Afghanistan. It's mm. a huge issue. And the UN is raising an alarm, and it's saying that the International Criminal Court should at this time recognize gender discrimination in Afghanistan as a crime against humanity. Is this late in coming, or do you think it's just apt to address it at the moment? You know, it raises a, it's, there are a lot of issues, and you need to have some sort of engagement with the Taliban leadership in Afghanistan if you want to have any impact. And we're concerned about having starvation uh, this fall because the, the crops aren't coming in the way they need to. And we need to engage with Afghanistan. There's, you know, we, it's a horrible policy they have in regards to women, but uh, policymakers have to come up with some sort of balance on how do we continue to work with Afghanistan while at the same time being very clear that there, this, this policy with women is, is just completely uh, beyond the bounds. Mr. Brook, I'm trying to imagine what these women go through, the trauma they are subjected to at this point in time. People who could, before now, attend school, gain knowledge, you know, be involved in gainful employment, but now all of that seemed to be history. Just how traumatized do you think they would be at this time? Oh, this is a huge issue. And, and let me be clear, too, that this is not a clear-cut policy within the Taliban even. It's the people running who are sort of in the leadership of the Taliban have made these decisions. A lot of the Taliban actually um, allow women to study uh, sort of surreptitiously 
uh, and are okay with that. And there is, I think, um, a lot of disagreement. The Taliban are not monolithic, although they do have their own factions. Uh, and it is possible for some women, especially online, to continue to study. Um, but nevertheless, the options they have, you know, with that education in, in, a, in this kind of Afghanistan are very, very limited. Um, so, yeah, this is a terrible time to be a woman in Afghanistan. And, and I think what we have to do as the international community is, is uh, do our best to help train the next generation of Afghans, even if it's not approved by the Taliban, uh, and basically help the women uh, or help change the policies in Afghanistan. And how we do that with this current Taliban leadership is a really difficult question. And uh, as it is, while the U.S. soldiers were still occupied Afghanistan. We know that there were certain Afghan nationals who actually worked with them, serving as interpreters, serving, uh, bringing on logistics and all of that. Some of them are still trapped in all of what is going on in Afghanistan, and they do not have freedom to go out. As a matter of fact, it does appear that their lives are more at risk now because they used to be connected to the U.S. What kind of international strategy do you think should come on board to give those people some level of respite? Well, let's be clear. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of Afghans who supported um, the previous government uh, and supported the U.S. support and the international support that there was to develop Afghanistan. Uh, so there's hundreds of thousands there that work uh, to support that with their families um, that have a certain degree of risk. Now, the Taliban are a mixed bag. They have not they have targeted a few people, but for the most part, they've been leaving these people alone and they have been allowing them to leave. I think there's more, uh, let's say, reluctance from the international community to allow these Afghans who, uh, who support Western um, values. Uh, there's, there's, there's more bureaucratic issues that prevent those people from leaving Afghanistan than, than actual um, reluctance of the Taliban or actual problems with the Taliban. So we are getting people out of Afghanistan. We are getting... Uh, for the past two years, the U.S. has been streamlining its process to get the uh, Afghans that want to come to the United States out, uh, there, but there's still a lot left there. And as you've discussed with the whole gender policy and other policies, uh, it's a very, very difficult place to live right now. So, yeah, something uh, needs to be done. I'd love to see the international community much more open to allowing Afghans that want to leave, uh, right. depart, and, uh, and, and move to other countries. I mean, the U.S. actually had an influx of Afghans after the 1979 um, coup that happened. And though that generation of Afghans became a, a very, very prosperous uh, group within the United States. And now we have the second wave of Afghans that are coming in. And I expect that they will be a very prosperous uh, immigrant group. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think that the, these Afghans have a lot of talent, a lot of value. I think the international community needs to be more open to allowing them into, uh, in, to leave Afghanistan and start lives elsewhere uh, until things change inside Afghanistan that allow women and people in general to have more freedom and, and have a more democratic society. I think the, the whole world needs to be concerned about this. A difficult place to live, you have described it. And as it is, uh, the economy also is shrinking because the women who used to be the ones supporting their homes no longer have the liberty to do that. Of course, this falls back on the home front and uh, you know, a lot of hungry children, out of school children, and all of that is going on. How can all of this be handled? Uh, well, it's very difficult, and the Taliban make it even more difficult. Uh, European countries especially have been raising this, this gender issue as a reason for not supporting Afghanistan. So the UN has a request for billions of dollars to, to support the, um, the, the poverty or support uh, people that are at risk in Afghanistan, but there's very few people, very few countries in the world that are willing to, to do that kind of support while we have such a uh, atrocious policy from the Taliban. And so, you know, it's a really, really difficult question because there's people who do, there's a world that would love to be more active uh, in supporting um, uh, the poor people inside Afghanistan and, and helping to change policies, but you just have such a, a difficult government to work with there. Um, you know, at the same time, um, it's a very, it's a much safer country than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, the Taliban were the major problem at the time, attacking uh, development projects, attacking NGOs, um, and basically causing these problems. Now they're in power, and you actually have a fairly peaceful country, other than the fact that they're, in a sense, attacking their own population with these horrible policies. 
And uh, Mr. Brooks, uh, finally, you know, troops withdrawal from Afghanistan was uh, expected to lead to some kind of uh, a better governance uh, that Afghan people should be able to handle themselves and and be okay. But then it does appear the reverse is the case. Uh, what can be done to bring good governance, the dividends of a good governance to the people? Well, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? Um, it's, it's, you really have a small faction, a small percentage of, uh, of the population that supports the Taliban inside Afghanistan. Uh, but one of the real problems Afghanistan has suffered from, basically its entire existence, is that they have a, they have a real problem unifying uh, under uh, a single banner. And so there is a lot of people in opposition to the Taliban, for example, but the, a lot of groups inside and outside of Afghanistan that are in opposition to the Taliban but they have not been able to unify. And this has been a constant problem in Afghanistan. And this is one reason that uh, after 20 years of international um, intervention there, uh, all of a sudden it goes right back to this, this really fundamentalist uh, uh, government that, that is clearly not representative of the Afghan population. We think we have seen some people within the Taliban are interested in changing, are interested in modernizing the country and are interested in and re-engaging with the international community, but they're not the ones in power right now. Um, that may change, what we can only hope. Well, that's the hope, of, uh, uh, you know, across board. Well, sincerely appreciate you for joining us. Member of the board of the African American Chamber of Commerce, Doug Brooks, thank you for talking to us on The World Now. It's been a pleasure.